This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. It's time now to go out to the other coast of the United States up to San Francisco, California and talk to the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, yes, Larry. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing much better. Last night I, uh, I, I didn't see my wallet. So then I'd realize I'd been out in the daytime earlier. So I thought, oh, my God, it fell out of my, uh, I was walking up to the gym. And That's the worst the feeling you can get. Is that the worst? Yeah. Yeah. And well, what happened? I'm running around in total panic, and then I came up, uh, came back up to the apartment, then I uh, go in the kitchen, and I'd left it on the uh, sink for some reason, which <laughs> I never do. But. <laughs> You left it on the sink. Yeah. Have you ever lost a uh, wallet? Yes. One day. One day. I see, I keep my wallet. Where do you keep your wallet? In your back pocket or your front pocket? Back pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I put it in my back pocket, and that's the worst place to put it. You could actually you should put it in your front pocket. Number one, nobody can really grab it from there unless they make you feel good, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's harder to fall out. But I like the back pocket. You know. So, have you ever thought about changing your pocket? Yeah, I, I, and I never, I always put it on the dashboard when I drive because it's, uh, it's a pain in the ass, literally, when you have your wallet in your back pocket and you're sitting down. But, but the front pocket would be good to keep away pickpockets. Uh, yeah. I was reading that, uh, this had, must have been a panic. I was reading that, uh, remember Red Skelton, the old comedian? Yeah. He had played the Indiana. State Fair in 1957 and got paid ten thousand dollars in cash, which was a lot of money then. Of course. And he flew back to Los Angeles. He had the cash in a paper bag, and he he left the bag on the plane. <laughs> oh Jesus! So. Anyway, what happened once was that uh, it only happened once here. Uh, uh, I had it in my back pocket, and it fell out and fell on the sidewalk. And I came upstairs, right outside my apartment, came upstairs, couldn't find my wallet. All of a sudden, there's a ring on the doorbell. And I answer it, and they say, did you lose a wallet? And they had found it on the street. And the guy came up and and gave me my wallet. And I just, you know, I had that, you get that feeling like, boy, did I dodge a bullet. For sure, yeah. You know, because, and the problem is your wallet contains, I've thought about, Taking just the things I need out of the wallet and putting it in a smaller wallet, which I would carry around. But then you have to decide which credit card am I going to use, which credit card am I not going to use. What uh, you know, what what uh, uh, information do I need on me? Do I need all my uh, my Medicare card and things like that? And by the time you're finished, you go. I may as well carry it around my wallet because I'm still going to lose it all, you know? Yeah, and if you lose it, I was just going through my head last night with, oh, my God, I'm going to have to cancel the credit cards, get a new license, and all the shit you have to go through. See, the credit card company should offer you a second credit card, which you don't, uh, you don't uh, activate, okay? You just keep it in case you lose your other one. That's and then when you lose idea. your other one, you can go online and say, I lost it, I'm activating the spare. Yeah, that's what they should do. They should, yeah, because they always have those ads. Yeah, we can replace it in a day, which is yeah, all, it never happens. Yeah, and, and and then your license, your driver's license. Yeah, that would be a yeah a nightmare. Yeah, they should give you like two copies of your driver's license, just so you have one in case, and then maybe it has a slightly different letter on it. And you, again, can go online and say, I want to deactivate the other one because I lost it. I want to activate the new one. And by the way, send me another extra card. You know. That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, why not? Simple. But then again, you're dealing with the state of California and you're dealing with the DMV. And when you're dealing with the DMV, 
<laughs> and, it, their, and their 1958 computers. It, well, in the DMV, you're not dealing with anybody or any I- existence that is uh, sentient in this galaxy, okay? I mean, these people are just somewhere else. You know, if anybody has ever gone to the California DMV, they know the horrors of the California. You, spec, you figure, I got to go to the DMV today. When when are you going to be back, dear? Well, I don't know. Maybe Tuesday. You know, it's, it's terrible. How bad is it in New York? I can't remember. I, oh yeah, I, I went over. We had to. I had to renew my uh, license, uh, and I went over. And all the stuff you got to get your doctor or something to your eye guy to my eye guy signs something so that I don't have to take the eye test. And it it took maybe a, a, an hour, hour and a half. It wasn't that bad because you make an appointment here, and uh, they say okay Tuesday at two o'clock. So Tuesday at two o'clock you go down, and of course you're not taking care of it on Tuesday at two o'clock, but at least you're in a queue to get everything done so it, it's yeah. a little more efficient here but only slightly i just remember the california dmv every time i had to go to it it was like horror show yeah i know <laughs> and they word. know the funny part is they know they're a horror show right yeah yeah and they don't do anything about it they still make I it mean, as miserable an experience for a human being as you can possibly have yeah, I used to go to, like, I'd go to smaller towns, and it'd be easier, like Petaluma, so it wouldn't be so crowded, so I could maneuver through there a little quicker, to renew a license. Uh, I saw a documentary on the guys, uh, the Sherman Brothers, who wrote all, a lot of the Disney stuff, all Mary Poppins and so on and so forth. Among those things, they wrote, It's a Small World After All. And uh, if you've ever been on the ride uh, at Disney World, uh, it, it, you go through uh, the it's a small world thing and you go in a boat and you go to different lands and things like that and there are different puppets doing stuff, right? And uh, if uh, remember Billy J? Billy J <laughs> said he got stuck on that ride. It just stopped. Oh, really? It dead stopped. <laughs> and he's sitting there as the music is playing, da 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 But it's on a loop so that it stops at a certain point because they figure you've turned the corner and it just repeats itself. da 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 And he was stuck there for three hours. Wow. And in this documentary, they said, if the Chinese ever wanted to come up with the perfect torture, it would be, it's a small world. That's hilarious. So I always figure if you wanted a perfect torture... Chinese wanted a perfect torture. Just figure out how the DMV does what they do. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's torture. It's just torture. But Billy uh, J. I think the first he was the first uh, comedian I ever met was Billy J. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He's were still, I guess, in Canada, right? He's in Canada. Yeah. He was uh, hilarious. Yeah, and he did movies and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden he kind of just went off the grid. Yeah, he had a, a movie that a Dustin Hot was. It yeah, Dustin it was uh, Billy uh, Bathgate. Billy Bathgate, right? Yeah, yeah, he had, had a pretty good little role in it, and then yeah. that was it. That was it. You know, um, I mean, I go back and I look at Kra- Steve Kravitz's movie credits, and actually, they're pretty extensive. Kravitz did a lot of stuff. Yeah, I did. Uh, was Sudden Impact with mm-hmm. Eastwood. Well, that was his big deal. He was in Howard. Yeah. He was in Howard the Duck. But he, I looked at it, and there's a whole list. I mean, stuff that he did. That I, and you go, wow. I didn't, you know. I told him I don't didn't realize he, his movie credits were that extensive. You know, you know, you know who I here's a name that I saw, and I'm trying to remember him. Okay, I'm watching the show Hot in Cleveland. I love Hot in Cleveland. All of a sudden, and it's really it's pretty good actually. Never, really, I haven't never, it. never watched it. Um, it's an, it's a, now off the air now, but you know it's on various streaming services and so on. And um, there's a the guy on the show. She's supposedly making a movie with Woody Allen, and she, a guy comes in and she fucks the guy, thinking he's Woody Allen. 
<laughs> and it's not really Woody Allen, it turns out. It's an assistant to Woody Allen, but he's worked with him for so long, he now sounds like him. <laughs> right? And at the end of the show, I look for the credit on it, because I want to see who did such a perfect impression of And it said Ed Krasnick. Oh, he did a great Woody Allen, yeah. Do you remember Ed Krasnick? Oh, sure, yeah. I remember the name, and I'm sure he was on my show. He was. But I... He did... Huh? He did stand up. He he started doing more one-man shows, but he was around here for quite a while and moved to L.A. Yeah, because I remember the name Ed Krasnick, but I couldn't picture Ed Krasnick. I can see that. He was one of those, you know, there were people in my show who would drift in and out of the show. Okay? And and at one point they were on a lot, and then all of a sudden they disappeared, and I guess they went to Hollywood, and they did one thing or another, and then eventually I'll see their name on a a big Hollywood credit, like I'm trying to remember who now went down and did Malcolm in the Middle and is now pretty much a a mainstay of producers and writers in in uh, of TV shows in Hollywood. That would be Alex Reed. Alex Reed, Abbasy. See, you remember the name? I don't that easily. Mm-hmm. And uh, but Alex Reed's been a big success as a writer producer the uh, and director. Comics got into writing, yeah, and he got into directing too. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, he directs some of those episodes of those shows. Uh, and uh, I I think, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's amazing that some of those people who kind of just went off the grid, they went off the grid into something better, you know? And yeah. so, I mean, you know, you don't sit around going, whatever happened to Alex Reed? Well, you know, if you ever watch television for any amount of time, his name will pop up on the credits. Are you an inveterate credit watcher? I always, anytime I go to a movie, I always watch the uh, credits for some reason. Yeah. Well, what I said was years ago, people say, why do you, why do you sit through the credits? Because I'm the last guy in the theater. Okay? Yeah, me too. You know, there's maybe one other guy somewhere else, and it finally comes up the last credit. And I said, the reason I watch the credits is if I really like the movie, it's my form of applause. You know, I'm saying that, okay. I've watched this movie. I've enjoyed it. I think it's my responsibility to know who made it. Yeah, so you put it together. Yeah, yeah not the stars on the screen. They're, they're like the final product. There's this whole line of people that lead to that point. And um, uh, quite frankly, I just, I, 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 you know, I always watch the credits. Uh, Marjorie drives me nuts because she likes to turn off the credits on TV shows, and I'm going... I'd like to watch them, you know. So, and and you can't watch. It's hard to watch credits today because if you're watching like a streaming show or a, a, a binging show, which I don't think you know about. Uh, have you ever binged a show? No, oh, no, no. I didn't think so because you got to have cable that has right. Yeah, you know the 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 uh, smart TV. Do you have a smart TV? <laughs> got an antenna you don't have cable do you no oh god oh god he's not a smart tv if he had a smart tv he wouldn't have any wi-fi to hook it up to right <laughs> larry what is with you have you completely opted out of the human race pretty much i don't think there's anything i want to see on tv anymore <laughs> although the hot l thing sounds actually pretty funny yeah it's very good it's very good and they love old TV stars. So Betty White's on the show as a regular. She's on there. But uh, one episode, uh, Ed Asner was on it, playing with Betty White. It's kind of a reunion, you know? I see it, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, there's some line about He says, I don't exactly see you sitting at home being a happy homemaker, which was the title of the character she played on Mary Tyler Moore. You know, right. She was the happy homemaker. Uh, stuff like that. And they, Gloria Engel, who was uh, on the Mary Tyler Moore show, was a regular on that show. These these are all over now. They finished about 2016, something like that. But I just discovered it, and it's it's wonderful. Just okay. wonderful. Uh, so if you ever get a chance, or you ever get hooked up to the rest of the world, 
Uh, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I'm a luddite. Well, every now and then I, I go to Larry. You know, hey, hey Netflix got a great show, but, but if you, you 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 don't have Netflix, there's no way you can have Netflix. No, no. They say, well, and, you know, he could get Netflix for his iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. They still well, haven't. My, they my, still they still haven't put high speed internet into your apartment house. I'm going to get that soon. I have to get that. That's killing me. Wait a minute. Do they have it in your apartment house? They have to because there's a bunch of techies running around here. But uh, Well, then why don't you get it? I will. I will. Wait a minute. I will. I will. If you got it, then we. what kind of computer do you have? <laughs> it's got Windows 10. I know the guy <laughs> upgraded it when it blew up a couple of years ago. Okay, it's got Windows 10. I'm, I'm doing yeah. this this uh, discussion with you on a Windows 10 machine. Okay. So you got Windows 10. So if you put in the high speed internet, all the things will come up faster. Okay. Mm-hmm. Plus, do you have a camera in your computer? No. No. Well, you could get a camera really cheap, and then you put that in there, and then we can do Zoom, and I mean, people can see you. Oh, that would be horrible. Oh, jeez. Wait a minute. How can you not want people to see you? You go on a stage. I know, and I feel bad about that. I can't remember who it was. I think it was maybe Mike Bloomfield or somebody like that. Uh, and I heard, I heard this story from uh, Bill Graham years ago. That uh, this, I think it was Bloomfield. Bloom, uh, I, I, I believe. I, I'm, please don't hold me to it, folks, but let's just use it for the sake of the story. And he was playing at the uh, Fillmore. And just before the show, just before he's ready to go on stage, uh, Bill says, by the way, um, uh, I got to tell you, your mother's in the audience. And he kind of panics for a moment, and he looks at Bill and says, whatever you do, don't tell her I'm here. (laughs) And then he went on stage. You know what I mean? (laughs) So anyway, you know what? Something that I want to talk to you about, and and it makes no sense to me whatsoever. But I do these things with you. Obviously, we pre-record them, folks. And uh, I sit here talking to you on really uh, your phone. Essentially, I'm using Skype to contact you, but I, we talk on the phone, and uh, that's very nice. But before I come in here. To talk to you, I put on a pair of pants. And I wonder, why do I put on a pair of pants? <laughs> Somehow I feel that if I was didn't have my pants on, there'd be something wrong with this conversation. Right. And I'm. it's all audio. He can't see me. I can't see him. But I sit here with pants. I put pants on to talk to people. But I'm, I mean, I don't, I never have to have pants on. I could be naked yeah. below my maybe, waist. It makes you feel professional, maybe. It, it, well, I'm in kind of pajamas is what it is. It's kind of like a, you know, something I wear around the house I would never wear out in the street. Uh, but I just, I wondered about that. Why Why do I do that? You know, I don't have to. You don't know no. that I'm not totally naked here talking to you. I don't know that you're not to. Oh, God, that thought is starting to. <laughs> burn itself in my brain. I don't, I don't know that you're not totally na- 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 naked. Don't uh, don't most anchor men just wear jeans because you just see them from the. Well, I remember when I was doing TV. I used to I used to get dressed. I used to put pants, really nice pants on, nice jacket, sh- shirt without a tie, you know, whatever. And then I suddenly realized. Nobody ever looks at you on TV below the waist, even if they're shooting you below the waist. So right. I could wear jeans and nobody would care. Absolutely nobody would care. And it's true. If you look at some news reports and things like that that people are doing out in the street, they've got a tie on, they've got a jacket, and they're wearing jeans. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it, Nobody ever pays attention what's below your jacket. So you're right. A lot of anchor men do wear jeans. Uh, especially if they don't have to stand up. I think the weatherman has to wear a nice suit. Right, yeah. You know. But uh, uh, I just, you know, 
So I just wonder why I do that for you. I guess it's it's common courtesy. I, common courtesy. I don't want you to talk to me naked. I, you know, I don't understand it. So what's new in your part of the world? Uh, I got to see our old friend uh, David Tell Saturday night. Oh God, yeah. How's he doing? He packed out Cobb's. Had a great crowd there. That was fun. So. Yeah, yeah. Although I did feel. <laughs> If I get COVID, it's going to be from Saturday night because it was just packed with people. Did they have masks on? They did, but I don't know if that's going to help when it's jammed in like that. Well, it felt like, if, it felt like old times. If you wear a mask, and if they're wearing a mask, it, it, it it's still possible, but it, it minimizes your chances. You know. Plus, you've been vaccinated, right? Yeah, I got a one and done. So. The one and done? Yeah, I oh. didn't get the two shots. So. Oh, you got the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. Oh, I could get a booster as soon as possible on that one. You know, just to be safe. Well, it seems like the uh, virus is finally fading away. Yeah, but I think you still want to get it. The reason it's fading away is people are getting vaccinated. You know, um, and also because this strain is not as strong or is not as lethal. As the other strain. And so it, it doesn't permeate as the other one did. So, you know, but, um, um, you know, I, I would be, if I were you, I would actually go back and get a booster, but get like the Moderna. You can you can mix and match like that. But the even even Johnson Johnson says they think you should go in and get another Johnson oh, yeah? Johnson. Okay. Yeah, they said it was like a one shot deal, but really it was it was a two shot deal like any of the others, you know. And it would just keep you safer, you know. You're over you're over sixty five, right? Yep. So you know the lethality of 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 this disease is is greater for old people. The majority of the people who are dying are old people, fat people, and people who, especially people who weren't vaccinated. So, uh, and we we still have a good amount of deaths. We I think we've all, almost gone over over eight hundred thousand, uh, or maybe nine hundred thousand. I don't know what's. I think it was nine hundred. Yeah. Yeah, nine hundred thousand. So you know, I will hit a million before it's all over. You know. Well, that's a good start. It's a good start. More parking places for you and me. <laughs> if only I drove. I don't. I don't drive. I've been driven in five, four or five years. You haven't driven. Wow. Haven't driven. I don't. And I get to have this fear. I don't know how to drive anymore. You know. I suppose if I got behind the wheel of a car, say I went out to the, like Marin, where it's a lot of space and stuff, and I got in the car, I could I could drive it and and get back into the swim of things. Uh, because you know, I used to, I used to drive like it was my second set of feet, you know, and um, but I just wonder whether I can get behind the wheel of a car now. Well, that would be uh, I would think horrible to drive in Manhattan. Well, that's one thing I wouldn't want to try it in Manhattan, and I wouldn't want to try it on the highway initially. I would just like to try getting in a car. I'm, I may go out to my friend Checky's and use his car just drive around the neighborhood. Uh, and and just see how I do. I'm sure I'll be, I'm sure I'll be fine. But because yeah, it's you're been, not going to forget to drive. So. Well, I'm not going to forget to drive. But I, I worry about you know I, I'm a little loopier because of the medicine I take and um, get a little tired easily. Uh, and I'm just wondering if if I just won't get behind the wheel of a car and fall asleep. You know. <laughs> well, how much would uh, do you? You don't have a garage in your building. No. No, no. And there's no reason for me to have a car. I mean, you know, think of the reasons I should have a car. It would cost a fortune for one. It would cost a fortune for the car. I'd have the car payments. Then I'd have to pay for a parking play, lot, which is like maybe four or $500 a month. And then I have to pay for the insurance. Before I'm through, I'm paying $2,000 a month to have a goddamn car. You it know? is. So I mean, it's it's like you have a car; it's probably paid off, right? Yeah, yeah. Old car. Old and, car. And how much is your insurance? It's like uh, I think eight hundred a year. Eight hundred a year. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, and uh, you you just park in your neighborhood, right? 
I've got a garage. You got a garage. How much does that cost you a month? That's because I've been here for a while. One seventy-five. Otherwise, it'd be three or four hundred. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, hey, listen, we're run, we've run out of time here. We're behind. We're, we're we've done our we've done our duty and we've done it well. And I always enjoy talking <laughs> with Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, see you, Alec. See, Don't lose your wallet. See you next week. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, Larry, thank you so much, Larry. Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. We like to call him Lawrence. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll call him Lawrence. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we uh, I guess, are ready to go to our citizen panel here. Uh, if you want to be part of that, by the way, just go to gabnet.net. If you go to gabnet.net and you click on the thing that says click here for Zoom, it'll immediately take you to our program and you can be a part of it if you so desire. And we would love to have you here. The more the merrier. If there are new people, uh, we love to have them on because uh, it makes life better all the way around. So anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's go to our uh, citizen panel. Let me admit uh, them here so far uh and uh look at they're, they're popping in here there's oh there's uh, uh uh what do you uh <laughs> sorry. brian Complete, completely naked yeah completely naked okay completely naked that's what you said right earlier said well i just know, i just said completely naked no that every time i go to interview uh somebody like bubbles I put on pan I put on these uh, pajama pants. These not pajama pants, but lounging pants, and I put on a shirt. You know, I get dressed up, even though I'm doing audio only with him. He can't see me, but somehow I feel compelled to get dressed. On your on you, in your case, I don't believe you're totally naked. I think I need to get my test kit. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. All right. Anyway, hello to Josh Wheeler. How you doing, Josh? I'm good. How are you doing? And uh, to Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice seeing you too. Um, and here we go. We're off to the we're off to the races. Now don't now you feel now I'm not completely naked. Yeah. Now I'm just half naked. Oh really? <laughs> okay. All right. Have it your DMV's way. DMV's got much better. You're talking about DMV. Yeah. Because of the, because of the whole online stuff that they've that they've had to do because of COVID. Mm -hmm. After COVID, they have now you know you, there's a lot of things you can do online now that you couldn't do before. Yeah. Uh, so really, yeah, the at least the ones over here, it's really really easy in and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So finally, they took advantage of technology because that same one was yeah they had chairs everywhere for people and now. Now it's really easy in and out because it's just like like new vehicle registration is pretty much, you know, like when you're changing from person to person, when it's going same to same, now everything's online. So they, after COVID, they did pretty good. Well, since I got my latest license, okay, um, I, um, um, uh, I think it was before COVID, uh, but they, at, at the DMV here, you make an appointment to, you know, for a certain time and a date, and you go down there, and it, 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 it's not exactly perfect, a perfect uh, <clears throat> storm on that deal, but it, it, you know, it really worked better, you know, so I was, I was happy with it. Did they give, so when, when did you last go in the driving test? Like oh, behind the wheel? God, I haven't taken a driving test since I was a teenager. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you talk about driving you just got your other license it's like wow yeah my no. grandfather my grandfather was 86 when i i flew down to vegas to pick him up and took care of him for the last few years of his life and he had a nice cadillac and so we're in the mm -hmm. we're in the right hand you know left turn lane but the, you know there's two turn two two lanes turning yeah and when we he, we got in his car and he's gonna drive back here to my house and 
And man, he crossed both lanes back and forth. Then we pulled in to get gas. I said, that's the last time you're ever driving. I will escort you everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when was the last time he had to take a driving test? Oh, yeah. I don't think he'd take one for a, a long, long, long When time. was the last time you took a driving test? Oh, yeah. I Just 16, I guess. When yeah, I got first yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last time for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was afraid they were going to maybe ask me to because I didn't know what the laws were here in New York, but apparently it's just fine, you know. Huh. I imagine maybe, uh, well, my next renewal will be when I'm 89 years old. <laughs> so I think they might want to give me a driver's test. Uh, Jeff, uh, oh, yeah. by the way, all we see is the top of your head. And your oh. air conditioning. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, uh, uh, do do you drive anymore? Yes, but not as much as I used to. Okay, but uh, when was the last time you had to take a driver's test? Probably when I was sixteen. See, <laughs> that's what I think. You know, I mean, and and really, nobody says to him, "Hey, you know, you had a stroke. Maybe we better see if you can still drive." You know. Uh, Jeff, after the stroke, though, they, they they take your license away from you, right? I think he's talking to Pam. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. able to drive for a year. And then you had a test. And then but, I. At the but they took your I license away, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it was at a at a clinical place. Uh, like a rehab. Yeah. Well, the thing was, shit, my friend Shecky. He got a little woozy and uh, pulled over to the side of the road. He had some people with him, and uh, he kind of almost kind of passed out, but didn't completely. And so they took him to a hospital because they wanted to make sure there was nothing really wrong with him. And uh, they couldn't find anything really wrong with him, but they took his license away. Oh. <laughs> they took his license away, and he it took him a good year to get it back. Wow. That's not to say he didn't still drive and come and pick me up at the bus stop and things like that, but you know, they 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 suddenly will take pull your driver's license for something like that. How about you, uh, 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 Kevin? When was the uh, when was the last time you took a driver's test? Uh, not not the written the actual driver's test. Oh, the driving part. Yeah, well, because I had a commercial driver's license they don't usually make you do that but i have to take the written test every two years and has hazardous materials every couple years oh okay so you you why is it so often for for you i mean with the you know with being a truck driver do they make you take the written test more you often take, yeah you gotta take the written test every five years and the mm, okay. writ, the uh, hazardous materials every two years Okay, ask me a hazard you have the hazardous materials. Okay. Just, just for grins, ask me a hazardous material question. <laughs> uh, shit, it's been five years. If you haul flammable material in a tanker, and you have a tanker endorsement, once the tanker is empty, can you take your placards off, even though you're hauling the tanker empty? I would say, no. 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 Because, because he nodded Not until his head. the tanker has gone through washout. Mm. Full purge. Oh, oh, oh. Well, right. I, I deal with gases, so it has to be fully purged. I see. How do you know that, uh, Josh? Because where you work, that's one of the things that happens? Because I also am trained to operate a commercial vehicle. Mm -hmm. I move trailers on a incredibly consistent basis, and... Yes, we also ship and receive a great deal. Yeah, so, if you're shipping, you got to be trained in most of that stuff know, too. All the laws. Wow. We're 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 trying to run two different kind of assays right now. The new building in, in Lodi, <clears throat> and we needed there's another assay, and there's one one uh, liquid that we needed, and we we just about to ship it over, and then found out that that uh, you know the the MDMS right with the, the what the paperwork is the the paperwork, but yeah, yes. that, that's my MDMS, but uh, so MSDS. They, MSDS. they call it, they shortened it, they just call it an SDS now. SDS, yeah, so, and it, it's a so, in, yeah. in my day, that was the students for a democratic society. 
<laughs> so yeah, so they had the so all of a sudden we're just about to bring it and they said, No, no, it can't go because it needs so we had to call we have to call this certain trucking agency that does that for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so very, very, very yeah, I guess about that. That, that's some of that stuff's the most stupid and the most complicated shit you've ever seen. Oh, try try and run a warehouse full of toxic gases. Oh, I know. Well, that's I, what I'm saying. We sh we well, should. I don't, I don't run a I don't run a warehouse full of toxic yeah. gases, but I do sleep next to Marjorie every night. <laughs> well, at least I mean, you don't have to get we a just, permit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We ship, you know, Flam Three, corrosive, the fucking poisonous, the dead fish symbol. I mean, yeah. I have no idea. Like, we I, ship has waste out too, so I mean, it's that's you know, waste I, is I, the worst. I have, I have no idea of what you're talking. Yeah, that that I mean that shit's so fucking. Waste awful. is worse than virgin. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's yeah. it's a pain. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, once you get once you get trained to do it, and you know it, it, same shit all the time. It it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Yeah, but I. But if you don't do to... it right, if you don't do it right, and you get caught, that you're fucked. Actually, the company abandons you. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 serious. Like, so I, I probably can't really give any details, but we accidentally put a very small like one gallon can of something and accidentally shipped it air freight and it wasn't allowed to go air freight and I thought I was going to have to get a fucking lawyer I mean I yeah. fucking swear to you yeah. it was a fucking gallon and I thought I was going to go to fucking prison and I didn't even do it you know, I mean, just, yeah. Someone who works for me did it. I was like, was it even fucking here that day? You know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Jesus. Fired on your day off. You know. It's like, fuck. You need to run into that crap all the time. Jeff and I have yeah. never had these kind of problems, right, Jeff? Not no, at all. Not at all. <clears throat> that, However, think... if you'd like to buy a gun, there <laughs> buy one get one free today. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck me. I mean. You, you accidentally ship, like, a little pint can of something that you're not allowed to on a, on FedEx Air instead of FedEx Brown. And it's like the government literally called the next day, and we're still answering their fucking questions. But I could have stopped at, you know, Vance's Sporting Goods on my way home and bought enough weapons to fucking start my own goddamn militia. No one would say well, anything That's, that's fine. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, remember all remember, conversation, I guess, but it's like, geez, I mean. I don't know I if guess you I'm, know. But remember yeah. when it came out to when they were shipping lithium batteries? Did you were you around? Yeah, for that? you can't you can't do that shit anymore, right? We had to go through a month of training to ship a fucking yeah. battery. Oh. Yeah, you got you do you have to take classes to ship. Oh, but you can't ship everything. the battery when it's in. You can ship one battery when it's in a device, but you can't ship yeah. the other three batteries. You have to ship Separate. them separately. And then right. you have to fill out the paperwork separately. Right. It has to go in this device. It has to have yeah. this. It has to have we, this. We and even when you ship it in a device, it's going to have all those fucking stickers and all that yeah. shit all over. Well, wait, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question, though. Uh, Lithium-ion batteries, we all know, have a tendency to explode, right? Right. That's can, why. Can you take them on a plane in a device? Yep. Yeah. You just can't take a pack of them <laughs> of just batteries. And you certainly can't ship it. Well, I would think. That the possibility of one of those batteries blowing up is while it's in operation. Absolutely. Rather than it makes just no sitting, sense. sitting in it. Makes its, no fucking sense. Fucking government. I mean, I. <laughs> you I can't mean, tell somebody not to bring their fucking cell phone on the phone, but you can. You can't you know, pack them in that fucking cargo bay. No, it, fifty at a time. Yeah. Is the <laughs> is the average uh, like say Duracell a lithium ion? No. Uh. What. Uh, like the, you know, I buy a whole bunch of, you know, Duracells at Costco. Are those lithium ion? I don't think so. Are they? Uh, yeah. I don't like know. These? I don't think so. Like yeah. these? Yeah. <laughs> these are not lithium ions. Okay. These are just lithium, I think. Oh. Is that more dangerous? No, these are alkalines. Oh, alkalines. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, lithiums yeah. are a little more expensive. Yeah. Better not ship a pressurized aerosol can on a fucking. Oh, you know? <laughs> remember when oxygen went down? Hard time, motherfucker. You, you better call Saul's. The only thing I can fucking tell you, because yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> you know, well, I think, I think that a pressurized 
bottle fell over and busted and that is what caused one of the value jet crashes that time mm -hmm. in the Everglades and after that they that was they, the oxygen yeah yeah, I'm pretty sure, right? I remember that value jet. It was leaking, yeah. Crash. That was yeah, years ago. I think it years, fell over years, and got yeah. the nozzle. It wasn't secured or something, and the nozzle Nozzle off got knocked, yeah. It took off like a rocket, which they will, and uh, like caused a depressurization or some shit like that. Yep. And uh, ever since then, you can't, uh, now you can't ship that stuff. Yeah. Air freight at all. It's pure oxygen. If you spark right. or fart, it'll ignite. Mm -hmm. hmm. Pretty what? much what it did. There's all that kinds changed, of laws. That changed stuff. also the the laws for uh, placarding on on the road with oxygen too. Yeah. Yeah. They there's all kinds of laws for that stuff. I mean it's it's crazy, and you can't you can't drive with placards on after you've unloaded the material that you were placarded placarded for you so, can get, yeah you can get busted right for so if you're the guy hauling the stuff and you got all different stuff and you stop and you make a delivery and you your your flam three placard stuff got unloaded you pull out of the dock and you stop and get out of your truck and take those placards off or if they pull you over and you're placarded but you don't have stuff that is that requires it you get fined for that because they say if you get in an accident, they're going to show up and look for what you're placarded for or whatever. And then if you're not, then... Which is the worst thing, because yeah. if you've got your truck parked overnight somewhere, and then you come back in the morning and some kid's gone out there and flipped all the placards over to explosive. Right. <laughs> so you're supposed to cover that in your morning DOT walk around, your yep. pre-trip. <laughs> yep. So what do you think? I've had it happen As to long as we're on the subject of trucks... The trucker thing in Canada continues to get worse and worse and worse and that. worse. Yep. Yeah. They're just shooting themselves in the foot up there. It really? In what way? Well, they're, they're not making any money sitting there doing nothing, and then they're pissing off everybody else that can't make any money. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're I also... Mean, they're also understand them, hmm. I understand them making a point. Trudeau isn't helping it either. Trudeau ought to just go down there and say, "What do you want?" Or listen to them. Just pretend. Yeah, even, yeah just you listen know. to them. Let them let them vent, and then say, "Okay, sounds good. See you later." If, if you don't, they'll probably all fire up and leave. If you don't mean it, at least fake it. You know, I mean, <laughs> do, do something to seem like you care. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he stands up there and calls them all terrorists. Well, that's going a bit far. You yeah. Know. I mean, uh, they are, you know, I mean, it is a terrible situation. Um, you know, um, it's interesting. Uh, I was reading about, uh, you, you're familiar with the situation with Jeff Zucker over at CNN and how he, uh, what they've, uh, oh, look who's there. Look who's there. Somebody poked her head in. Oh, there she disappeared. Oh, wait a minute. Now she's poking her head in again. Ah, uh, you see? Yes, see? Uh, there she is again. It's kind of like yeah. play, it's kind of like playing Where's Waldo. <laughs> what, 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 what's all that, Adrian? She's trying to find the Gabnet channel. They're all her uh, Happy Valentine's Day cards for her friends at school. Oh, really? How nice! Oh, uh, she's gonna get writer's cramp. Oh. <laughs> I start tonight. Yeah. Uh, hello, Patrick. We haven't seen Patrick in a while. Everybody, say hi, Patrick. Patrick, what's up? Uh, and and hi to Alan. Uh, he just joined us. Uh, no, no, what I was saying is that this uh, thing with CNN and Jeff Zucker, it seems as though all the the people who work there, the on the air people, have been protesting uh, that Jeff Zucker was forced out of out of CNN. And one of the lower echelon groups and uh, groups of people have been saying to the press, you know something, these. Anchor people are the biggest group of spoiled children in the business. <laughs> they say they they don't understand. This is the business. That's why Zucker is out. This is the business we work in. You don't suddenly have a hissy fit and 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 cry and stomp your feet because they fired your your boss. You know, and uh, the, the, but the the word out there was about what a bunch of babies. Uh, the, the anchor people were at CNN because they're all protesting. No, and they're, 
they're kind of the ones that helped create this cancellation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know that it was the people as much as it was, you know, uh, the media, mm -hmm. right? I mean, constantly harping on, you know, uh, so-and-so has been at his job for 15 years, but here's a video of him from 18 years ago where he said X, Y, or Z. Why hasn't he been fired yet? Well, it wasn't even that bad. The I mean, this was a shit. case where he had a woman who he worked with. It was actually, he. she worked right under him. I don't want, no puns intended here. And and he, she, um, uh, he, they were failed to report it to the company that they were having a relationship, which quite frankly, I think is none of the business of the, of, of the company. If there's something hink, hinky going on, then maybe there's a problem. But if it's a relationship you're having, she lived on the floor below him. You know, they've. It was a. It was a real. They had fallen in love after 20 years of working with each other. They suddenly realized they had something deeper going, and they both found themselves without husbands and wives, and uh, they decided to do something about it. And because they didn't report it, that's the reason he was forced out of out of CNN. Come on. But did one of them? Did one of them report to the other? Was one the boss? He was the boss. She reported. It was her boss. She reported to him. But ah. this is a relationship they've had for two yeah. years. Everybody in the in, in the company knew about it. It yeah. wasn't like it was a big so, secret. You know. They wanted him out. And by the way, he he well he quit. He finally quit because he was going to quit this year anyway. But he finally quit. Guess who still has a job? She does. His 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 girlfriend, mm -hmm. who may wind up being his future wife or whatever. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's just. It, but but what they're what these people were saying was, these people who are complaining are real babies. You know, they're just spoiled brats. And they but, and then they also added they have no concept of what goes on in the real world. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they the companies company with HR, HR can get in big trouble because if there's any kind of favoritism for anybody. But then if you say, oh, well, that person is sleeping with that person, no matter how long they were together or friends or whatever, that's when either, either they wanted him out or other people said, oh, look, there's favoritism there because this is going on. They had worked with each other for 20 years and never had I, a relation, never had a relationship till just now. Yeah. yeah. You know. So it wasn't like she was sleeping with him to keep her job. She had a right. job, you know. Yeah, yeah, but it sounds like somebody wanted him out. Oh yeah, well I think yeah, I think the the new uh, the new owners which are coming in they just okayed it. As a matter of fact, the Discovery mm -hmm. Channel, okay, uh, is going to be uh, CNN. Yeah, it's going to be CNN Discovery or something like that. I don't know, but. Uh, uh, they, I, mean, I, they, what? I get the point about, you know, the anchors or whatever, but I mean, I don't know. I guess I would be interested to hear what other people think, but I don't, I don't know who drove this cancellation stuff. To me, I don't really know that it was the population at large. Was it, was it the people? Was it us? Or was it the media who built this firestorm of every time we find out someone did something a long time ago? You know they need to be out. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I watched a movie the other night that had Kevin Spacey in it. I don't know if I should like punch my fist into the wall so they bleed now to punish myself. Or, I'll tell I mean, you, I bet, I bet, a bad person. I bet, Go company, wash your hands. I bet companies that have rights to movies that Kevin Spacey is in, and mind you, he was in literally hundreds of movies. Okay, I bet they don't show them as often. You know, I don't, right. I mean, I which I think is you know, I sound uh, you know, if the guy, uh, say, had an Academy Award winning performance fifteen years ago, is that performance any less valid because he suddenly you know I don't know pinched somebody in the butt, you know? I mean, I just I I I think this has gone too far. I I, I, I been, but I mean, I guess that's what I'm saying is. That if we're going to ask that question, though, but who is it that really cares about that stuff? Because I think it's the media. Because when I talk to you all here, 
everyone seems to say, yeah, I don't know, I don't care. Well, it, I guess it, when but, I talk to people that at my work mm -hmm. or whatever, they're like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Well, so they, who is it that cares about this shit? Well, they're, they're, it seems like the media. Oops, There's a story so, for them, right? Excuse me, folks, if you had a little problem there. Um, uh, uh, let me see here. I got to. I got to bring in Tony. Um, uh, the, the The point is that, uh, and I think it's important to, to 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 make a distinction that you know uh, sometimes people uh, did things. Uh, for instance, I I did things on my radio show in San Francisco. What? How many years ago was that? Twenty five. Uh, what have you? I I can't remember how many. Uh, Thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I can't even count the years now. But we did stuff which I think, if you wanted to go back, you could pick something out that we did, you know, that was, oh, the hit, that was that was sexist, you know. Um, that, made, mm -hmm. that made somebody feel uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. you go, well, wait a minute, it was a whole different set of rules back then. I was operating by those rules. Some of them... Right. By the way, I, I still was very much of a gentleman and I wouldn't abide by because I felt they were wrong then, just like some people fought, feel they're wrong now. But I don't know what I did or didn't do. I don't know how many women I went out with who couldn't turn around and claim, oh, he came on to me. He made me feel <laughs> uncomfortable. You know, uh, I mean, I don't know. But uh, I'd like to think that I was enough of a decent person that I... I wouldn't want to make anybody feel com uncomfortable. But I mean, this whole thing about going back years and years and retroactively making somebody guilty, that's exactly what went on in the McCarthy era. When they went back 20 years and said, are you now, are you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And somebody went to a Communist Party meeting in 1935. And since then, you know, as a Republican or whatever. I mean, Ronald Reagan was a dyed-in-the-wool communist for crying out loud. And we, we forgave him, or I didn't forgive him. I didn't forgive him for his movie career. Yeah. He but, turned around and informed to the FBI. <laughs> yeah, he turned around and informed to the FBI. Besides yeah, which, besides being a communist, he was a rat on top of it. You know, so. I mean, but, but how far back do you go? I remember that happening during the McCarthy era, and I found it appalling. And people, you know, at a certain time, by the way, in this country, right, right, uh, right during the depression and s just shortly after the depression uh, there was a popularity in in people saying oh you know maybe we wouldn't do bad under communism because that's capitalism thing look what it did to us and some people flirted with it you know and whatever and then they gave up on it but now it's 20 years later and somebody's sitting them before a committee saying are you now have you ever been a member of the communist party and you go, well, way back when, when it was okay to be a member of the Communist Party, but certainly not now, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the difference between that and the same thing we're doing today about, you know, hey, you wrote a tweet 20 years ago where well, they didn't have <laughs> tweets back then, but, you know, you wrote something back then or you said something on the radio back then, and now you're, ask, you're being asked to atone for it. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. You know, so... Mm -hmm. Hello, Tony. How you doing tonight, pal? Pretty good. You know, I was going to ask you, Alex, you mentioned the McCarthy hearings, which I find interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw, I was going to ask you this. I, I think I asked Shecky this. Mm -hmm. I watched the movie with my brother, The Ricardos. I didn't realize that that was based on, she. they were going after McCarthy, with that she signed something. When she, what would, she made, uh, like, they filled out like a voting card. In like 10 she, years she registered or something as a communist yeah, 15 as years a communist, earlier. And, they were going after her, yeah. and she did it for some stupid reason, you know, nothing that had to nothing, particularly yeah, her, do with Nothing, her grandfather or her uncle was like uh, interested in it, like you were saying, yeah, or something like that. whatever, you know, but I mean, it's just, uh, I, I saw what happened back in the McCarthy era, and I don't see a real difference between then and this. Some people say, well, that was about communism, you know, well, no, it was witch hunting, and that's Not what true. this is. You know, I, I, I think uh, if somebody goes, hey, you know, yeah, I said that 15 years ago, but I don't believe that today or I wouldn't write it today in this atmosphere, uh, then they should be forgiven for it. Right, Patrick? Uh, yeah, 100% correct. Yes. I think that's a, this is something we can agree on, right? Right. Politically. Um, 
And uh, how's it, how you doing, Patrick? Hmm? Or what? How you doing? <laughs> okay, I'm I'm alive. <laughs> Read it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fine. And nothing. I mean, uh, the only thing I have to bitch about is the weather. But yeah, it's been about forty degrees, so it's been like fucking summer. So. Did you watch the last episode of uh, Boba Fett? Yes. And you begin to wonder where was Boba Fett? You know, I, I mean, it turned into the Mandalorian. Well, yeah, so did the other one, but they were better than any of the sequels. So yeah, right, exactly. I was exactly. happy with that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah. it it, uh, it it ended kind of fun. We got Gorgu back again. You know, he saved the day. I like the way he made that that big monster go to sleep, and then he fell asleep too. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, I, I would have too. But, yeah. yeah, he was a yeah, good. Yeah. Enjoying it. Yeah, but uh, it's a good show. It's a good show. Um, um, but uh, because you're a big Star Wars fan, right? He nodded, folks. For those listening just to the audio only, he <laughs> nodded. You can't nod on Jack's show. On Jack's show, you've got to actually speak up. Say something or else. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, is anybody watching the Olympics? I guess not. A little bit. Just the Sean White, that's all. Sean White, yeah. Why is it that we have a lot, the big deal this year is all these people crying? Do you notice that? He had that woman crying, uh, and um, uh, then you had Sean White broke into tears. Oh, yeah. You know. But I think, was that tears of, like, relief, do you think? I mean, all those years of being competitive and having the pressure of competition, and now he doesn't have it anymore, you know? He can just... He realized he was old. <laughs> yeah, thirty-five. Yeah. How do he you think I feel? Were, he said his legs were killing him. Yeah. You yeah. could hear him saying that, going, "My legs just gave out. They just couldn't take it no more." And I said, "It sucks getting old, doesn't it, buddy?" Yeah, it's like thirty-five feeling that way. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, know. but look at what he's done to his legs all those years. Yeah, I know. Just oh, think yeah. what you feel like when he's just sixty. Yeah. Right. Oh, here we go. Here comes Ray Renati. Yes, Jack. Hey, I heard a, a thing about getting old yesterday that struck me. <clears throat> uh, some folks in Britain did a survey about when do people think someone is old? And I was shocked to learn that at least in Britain, it's not until you're 76. So I've got about yeah, but three they, But they were asking 70-year-olds. Uh, yeah. I asked Adrian last week, and she said 90. Oh, <laughs> really? Did you ask child. Adrian that and she said 90? She said 90. I said, what do you think is old to 90? 90. Said, okay, well, I, well, I'm young then. <laughs> well, well uh, you know something? When next time you see her, give her a big sloppy kiss for me. You know? <laughs> I mean, and you for know. me too. Yeah. yeah. And for my cat. <laughs> when you were a kid, how? Uh, what did you think old was? When you were like, say, 10, <laughs> what did you think old was? I thought like 30 and 40. If 30 years old was old, and then you get a little bit older, and then it's 40. Then you get a little bit older, and it's 50s. Just keep going like that. So, mm -hmm. Well, our slogan was never trust anybody over 30, so that was 30. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, that was don't never trust anybody over 30, but we didn't say that was necessarily old. You just couldn't no, trust them any longer. That's when you. That's when you. You know, you lost it after that. I kept saying, "Don't trust anybody uh, over 30. and then I suddenly realized I was over thirty when I said it. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> so. Yeah, but they they always say they die so young too, you know. And there's some people, fifties. They say, "Oh, they're still so young." You know, Bob Saget still so young. <clears throat> but maybe it's just their attitude or how they seem, not their age. Well, my <laughs> mother. At 91, had her best friend die, they were approximately the same age, at 92. And I swear to you, she said to me, 
How could she die? She was so young. <laughs> so it's all relative. Yeah. It is. Yeah, you know, you can't. it's all relative. Um, My dad died when he was 43. Wow. And I didn't realize how young he was until I was 53. Mm -hmm. Because he died two days after uh, after my 13th birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I said to myself, gee, you know, when I was 43, I was making one of my career comebacks. Yeah. You know, so he was. Yeah. Well, still, you want to hear the pathetic thing? This is what? my career comeback. <laughs> my same Jack, same here. My mom died when she was 37 and I was 13. I just turned 13. And yeah, and you don't realize it. I realized, wow, you know, people kept saying, oh, she was so young, so young. And then, man, when you turn that age, it's it's weird because the same thing. Yeah, I've had the most fun in my life in my 40s and 50s. You know? Well, my father died at 59. <laughs> so when I hit 59, I was getting scared, you know, because uh, and uh, my mother, but my mother died at 100 and a half, you know, wow. so. Uh, but uh, what what did your what did your what did your mother die of, uh, Brian? Uh, she had uh, asthma and she sort of had some kind of flu or something. In the middle of the night, she uh, when she was lying back, her ass she had started having an asthma attack and she was in bed alone. It was Father's Day, so my my stepfather was out all night with his dad, and uh, so the phlegm clogged up her throat. She oh, suffocated. Boy. Oh Ooh. boy! Yeah. And how about your father? Um, uh, um, yeah. Jack, uh, cancer, cancer at at yeah. forty, at forty three. He was diagnosed at about thirty six, thirty seven. What kind of cancer? Uh, something that today would have been eminently treatable. Colon mm. cancer. Colon cancer. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I got to tell you something. I was watching uh, an episode as I have been lately of Hot in Cleveland, and. Um, on the show, on the show, uh, v Valerie Bertinelli finds out she has a pituitary tumor. And she, they said, she said they can take care of it with radiation. And then if they can't take care of it with the radiation, they just go up through your nose and pull it out, you know, get rid of it. And I'm thinking to myself, my father died of a pituitary tumor because they couldn't operate on it in those days. They didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Because it's here, and then if you go to the center yeah. of your head, that's where it is. Very hard place to get to. If they could, they could go in there, and but they'd hack your brain to pieces. And you know, if you were lucky, you just lost all memory of your prom. You know, but otherwise, you'd lose your memory of a lot of things. And now, t today, it's a simple procedure to take care of a pituitary tumor. And I just think about it. my father just lived. I, if he just lived 10 years longer and had that happen, he probably would have lived yeah. another 20 years. Uh, and, and, and because I went out with a woman who I said, uh, so she said, oh, I had a big operation a couple of years ago. I said, what? She said, I had a pituitary tumor. I said, my God, and you're alive? And she says, oh, yeah. They just go in now and boom, boom, boom. And I went, geez. Yeah, and I told her about my father that in, in his day, and it wasn't that many years earlier uh they couldn't do it so there are a lot of things we can do today that you know we couldn't do then and, and as you say um a, a colon cancer you know oh, I, I biggest shock of my life i was reading about uh, somebody that uh, was in the business that you and i have been in and uh somebody whose name i'll mention george goebbels remember george goebbels on tv goebbels Goebbel. yeah Goebbel. yeah mm -hmm. uh he died from the same surgery that I had 11 years ago. He was having heart by, uh, an early heart bypass. But, but they weren't uh, as good as it, at it back then, right? No, nah, no, nah, but in six weeks, I was out doing whatever I had done and encouraged to do even more to get back on my feet full. Yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you have a zipper? Oh, have I got a zipper? <laughs> I mean, do you, did you get the zipper? Uh, Member of the zipper club? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I you think see, it was, was it Letterman who had five bypasses? Mm -hmm. Five? Yeah. I mean, I didn't, yeah. I thought there were only four. 
No, <laughs> they're, bypass. they're five, and I, I think I met somebody when I was uh, going uh, to rehab who had had uh, who had, had uh, all total had had six because they had to go back and do two of the ones that he had done initially. Wow. Wow. And how have you felt since then? Actually, uh, I have felt pretty good. The only, the, the only problem I have, the only ongoing problem I have, is uh, you know how the procedure's done. They take you into the uh, operating room. They treat you like the Christmas turkey and crack you open. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, right. You know, and, they, and one of the things they do is they break your breastbone. Look, you like I was hurt you. Not that yeah, bad. That, I'll tell you something that was worse. No, um, don't tell me worse. Come on, we want to keep listeners here. Well, anyway, the only problem I have is that sometimes I have a little chest pain, not from the heart, not from any of the oh. stuff they had to do, but from the bone. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, cold weather. Yeah, I get a little. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, now, if you had any <clears throat> lasting effects from your situation, Patrick? I, no, I, I can't say there's any. I mean, I don't know. I can't walk. Oh, okay. Well, that seems to not good. <laughs> I mean, when was yours, Jack? That big, that's not that big of a of an issue. So. Well, that's what I like about you. You've never let it be a big issue. You know, you got on with your life and you live it day to day on a, on a very positive basis. I've always, I've often said to people when you're not listening that you're kind of my hero. You know, well, it, either deal with it or or eat a bullet. I guess I don't know. I, I, I to me, if if you want to live, you just deal with it. Yeah. Exactly. And it's not easy for everybody. I mean, there are counselors if you need it. Uh, my motivation was I wanted to get back to work. So. Mm -hmm. But also, there, it, 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 having the condition that you have, okay, doesn't it take a little more, it takes a little more work than not having that condition. In other words, You've got to think ahead, don't you, every day about what you're going to do when and how and so on, and i got to do this now and so on. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, you develop a, 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 a routine. A, a ritual. A plan. Mm. Yeah, a plan. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've often wondered if I had my issues occur now versus 19 years ago, I wonder if I'd be paralyzed after the surgery, just because of medical advancements, you know, things like that. Um, but that's about all I, I give it is a couple of minutes thought. You go, well, I wonder, and then you move on. Well, you know, if you so, hadn't gone to a veterinarian, you know. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But he was an orthodox veterinarian. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing that all these things that we're talking about, it's it, it I, I, you know, we're uh, it, a lot of people are getting things today that, oh, say 20 years from now, they can solve, you know, it, it, but my question is, how many lives do we really want to save? <laughs> I mean, do we really want people to live to be 125, 150, or even 80, <laughs> or even 80? I mean, but what I'm saying is, is that, uh, you know, uh, do we really want people living to be that old? And can we, can we take it as a society? Because that becomes a burden to the society to take care of them and to make sure that, you know. So I don't know. I don't know. Years ago, I read a book mm -hmm. about uh, an immortal. And the only thing that he said that was bad about being able to live forever mm -hmm. was you saw all the people that you love die I, yeah. mm -hmm. well i mean it's, forget about people you love i mean in my case i don't uh, you know uh most of my friends who i had do had, did care about are dead okay oh, and, thanks, ben. i appreciate that well 
I, I said, uh, yeah. Said well, friends. I said friends. No, I, I, but I mean, <laughs> you know, my really close friends, my best yeah. friends uh, yeah. are dead. And uh, mm -hmm. a couple of women that I had relationships with, dead. That one, that one got to me the first time that I had a, a woman who I slept with okay. died. I, I, not while she was in bed with me. I mean, she oh, died. Yeah. Although, mm -hmm. remember, remember my friend Bob <clears throat> Rubin? Yeah, I think he was making love to a woman, and she died while he was having sex with her. And my I, uncle could top that. He died while making love with somebody. Well, no, but it, 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 think about this for a second. You're making love to a woman. She dies while you're making love to her. That's got to put you off, you know, for quite a few years. And I asked him if it did, and he said, yeah, it did. He said, I, you know, I just couldn't. He must have felt like the Grim Reaper or something, no? Yeah. I mean, what a horrible oh feeling God. that is, you know. Well, I knew an old guy who... Uh, of course, guy. most women that I went to bed with wished they were dead, but, you know. <laughs> well, I knew this old guy who was uh, around our age, whatever that is. <clears throat> and he started dating this younger woman, uh, considerably younger, like 35 years younger. Mm -hmm. And fool that I was, I said to him... You know, sex with somebody that young could lead to death. And he said, if she dies, she dies. That's the you oldest know? joke and in the world. I, it's the it's second oldest. Anyway, uh, when I heard that my mom's oldest brother, who was my favorite uncle, had passed away while in a Motel 6 with a woman 30 years younger than him, and he was like 74, 75 years old. I thought they were kidding me because my family tells these great tall tales about each other. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until a couple of years later when I was sitting down with his oldest son and I asked him, hey, did my uncle really die in bed? With he said, yes, it happened. And uh, I said, did you know her? He said, know her? At one time, she had been, uh, she had been the substitute teacher at for one of my high school classes, and I said, "Damn, man, you know that's you know that's freaky." Said, it's freaky. You should have seen the uh, look on everybody's face at the mortuary when they were, you know, filling out the death certificates and all. Was well, it death? Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. This is a really and, and this they, is a really positive discussion we're having yeah. here. How you doing, Ray? How you doing, Ray? Hey, I'm all right. How are you? Hey, is your pulse still working okay? My pulse? Oh, I'm just yeah. checking in on you. I have a pulse because tonight yeah. this is a there's a lot of mortality going on here tonight. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't want to die. Now I'm just thinking about death for crying out loud. Well, I have this great fear of death, so you Me know. Me too. I'm terrified yeah. of it. Really? We should yeah. get together and talk. Yeah. We should have a support yeah. group. Yeah, we, we should. should. We should start. How many one. here, just by a show of hands, are afraid of death? Oh, me. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Wow. To even now, move, now, uh, to just like I, not I, exist. I, I want Patrick's take on this. You're not afraid of death. No, I. In fact. Uh, uh, I don't know if I told this on the air ever, probably have, but um, after 16 hours of surgery, they um, turned me back over onto my back and I had all the electrode attached to me and everything went dead. And they realized something got fucked up. So they took me in for a CAT scan because they didn't want to just reopen me up without maybe seeing if there was a screw that was too tight somewhere or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I woke up in the CAT scan. No, oh, wow. I realized at that point something bad had happened, and I said a prayer, and I said, if this is it, then this is it. And I imagine that's pretty much the way it is mm -hmm. when you when you die. You, you don't really have a choice whether you're in the hospital or 
you know, and that I was on a CAT scan table with my arm tied above my head so that, I don't know anybody else that had CAT scan, but you got to keep your arms above your right, head. Right, right. While they tied mine so that, you know, they could be above my head. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking, because I wasn't sure if I dreamed that or if it was real. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, did you guys use red um, tie material mm -hmm. to keep my hands above my head? And they said, yeah, how do you know that? And I said, well, I briefly woke up when you put me in the machine, so. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I mean, and I didn't have any pain that I was aware of or anything like that. I'm sure it hurt like a motherfucker, but, you know, but. Yeah, so that was the closest I ever came to death that I'm aware of, and I wasn't scared. I just thought, well, shit, I can't do anything here, so I got that at the end yeah. of it. Uh, I was going to say, I, you know. I thought that was it. Yeah, I, I've had a near-death experience. I've been married three times, four times. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff, you've had a near-death experience. Obviously, you had a stroke mm -hmm. years ago. Oh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, what, what what was going through your mind? Were you th so you have no fear of death now, right? After going through something nah, like that, not really. And and I had you know surgeries after that too. Mm hmm. So, uh, and I'm not afraid of those things. Yeah, but you're a survivor, you know. Yeah, that's I good. How, how, how about anybody else here multiple had multiple times? It, it, uh, multiple times. Anybody here else here had a near death experience? No. Wow. Okay. At least not more that I was aware of. No. Oh. Well, uh, well, what you well, the, you had the heart operation, but did you have some kind of thing that happened that made you have to have that heart operation? <laughs> well, uh, uh, nothing really uh, major. I had passed a uh, heart stress test six weeks before, and they told me I was good, but. Uh, uh, one night I had an allergy attack and just couldn't breathe right. Took my took myself to the uh, emergency room and they said, you're either having a heart attack or you're on the verge of having a heart attack. And I said, ah, shit. So they just rushed you in and did it? No, no, they, no, they, they said, uh, would you open wide, please? Oh, not your mouth, your wallet. And, uh, uh, after they found out I had good insurance, they started r running uh, tests and things, and it took them a, a, a few days to decide what to do with me. They were going to initially do a, um, uh, a not a bypass, but you know, one mm -hmm. of them insert the thing in the vein. Angie, uh, Angie, yeah. But uh, after I'd been in the hospital for two days, they said, "No, we've gone back and looked at some of the tests, and you're in worse shape than." We initially thought you were. I just the person uh, who had the uh, biggest problem was Donna, my wife, because mm -hmm. they came out of the surgery after they'd had me on the table for about five hours and said it's much worse than we thought it was. Wow. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, this is I, <sighs> I just thought of a joke. So, per, per, please, you know, don't hold this against me. But uh, where do you find out where to get angioplasty on Angie's list? <laughs> okay, Ouch. I just thought I'd try <laughs> that one out. You know, you can use that if you ever want to at a party <laughs> or if you plan on trying to lose friends. So that would be good, too. So. I, yes, I can, Tony. It, I mean, I have no recollection of it, but my brother can attest to it and my sister. I, when I was born three months early, I was in an incubator, and they gave me the last rush, my brother said. Well, they didn't think I was going to make it. Really? So I have no recollection at all. Well, you, well you, you, of course you don't. You know. No. But they said, yeah, they told him others, like, he may not make it. They so gave they, him coffee, uh, right? What? No, I mean, well, what, 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 what? He just went to labor early, yeah. Alan? If I was Republican, I would go get my angioplasty or heart surgery from Rand Paul. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Now yeah. hold it, hold He's an it, eye doctor. hold it. We have a Republican here in Patrick, I who I it. respect, and so let's not make jokes about generalizing Republicans. Am I right, okay. well, Patrick? You no, know, this guy goes after Fauci like he knows more about virology than Fauci does. So who? Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Yeah. 
Well, Rand, Rand Paul. What, what is Rand Paul? He's like an ophthalmologist not, or something. Yeah, he's he? an eye doctor. Right, yeah. an ophthalmologist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You but, know, Phil says he trusts him more than than Fauci, and I'm like, what? okay, that's crazy. Uh, well, of course, yeah. Phil said that. You know, we haven't heard from Fauci lately. Do you see, have you seen I him lately? Huh? Thank God. <laughs> There you go. Right. I mean, there it is. Two days ago. Spoken like a true. Really? You, you saw him somewhere two days ago? I had a statement two days ago talking about the Omicron situation and where we stand with that. And Oh, by the way, do you know now they're saying the latest booster is only good for about four months? Oh, come on. Another shot we got to get. I'm not going to get the next shot. Yeah, they're, they're thinking of. This yeah. is number four now. Come on. Well, listen, if they tell you you got to get one once a week, I'm there. Yeah. Okay. Dude, it seems like it's sizing up. Me there. too. <laughs> you know, big I deal, man. Almost a year that I had to get a, a needle every day. Oh, really? And my my wife had to do it. What What was it for? What was for you? It was after um, after the stroke. <clears throat> oh, okay. And it's heroin days. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It helped him get a boner. Four shots a day when I was getting trying to get my diabetes under control until they came out with this once a week thing I do now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get used to it. But anyway, I mean, so I mean, I uh, you know, I've always had this great fear of death, and and as I get older, you know, it it it's even worse, you know. So I don't know. You know, and then he, you were talking about people who die who you know. Uh, how about people you die, that die that you don't know, like all the the stars or the people that you grew up with in entertainment, you know, uh, who who suddenly are dying left and right and, you know, sideways. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, people I know, too. I mean, people like, uh, like uh, Bob Saget and people like uh, 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 several other people people that I've known over the years who suddenly um, uh, what was there one another one I thought of tonight that died recently I mean I'm, you know all of a sudden all the people I've known or people who are stars or whatever that I watch in movies they're all dying you know uh, yeah Frank DeRosa senior <clears throat> one of my car car idol guys but um, yeah he was 92 and every time I would see him the last couple of years all he would talk about is all the dead people he, he lived in Pittsburgh, California, and he grew up there and was like a historian there. And uh, yeah, everything, every time I'd see him, he'd talk about the next person that just died, you know, and he's like, there's nobody left. Yeah. Who was this? Uh, Frank DeRosa. Frank DeRosa. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I, I always said I really only had three really what I called really best friends. And, and uh, I'm very funny about that. I mean, I consider all you guys friends. But it's on a different level than best friend, the kind of person you call every other day or that you have an ongoing relationship with, that uh, they can depend on you, you can depend on them. You know what I'm talking about. And um, uh, I had about three really good friends, and two of them are dead now. Shecky's still alive, and I'm keeping him on life support. I'm not letting him go, you know. So, you know. It's amazing. Oh, we lost Jack. Oh, because we and I've got to play the theme in a second now. Uh, he had to get ready. Huh? Yeah, he had to get ready to go to his show. Well, let's start the theme here. What I should do is go to him right now before he's ready. Anyway, hey, it's been a nice little chat tonight about the Grim Reaper. Uh, Jeff, thank you for being here. Uh, Brian, always great to see you. Uh, 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 of course, Josh. You know, what can I say? Whenever you're here, it's it's a good deal. Tonight we didn't talk much politics, which you probably would be good at, uh, but we hope you uh, enjoyed being here and being a part of the panel. Uh, the same thing is true. Kevin, Kevin, great talking to you tonight. Uh, Stop thinking about it. Live life. Well, my as my father said, life is for the living, you know. Uh, he said, after I'm gone, just get on with yours. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patrick, thank you so much. Say goodnight to Gorgu for me. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, Alan, thank you. Thank you, Tony. And, of course, Ray, nice seeing you here tonight, too. Thanks for the real 
depressing talk that we had tonight. Good luck, yes. Josh. Good luck, Josh. Yeah, good, good luck, Josh. What do you mean, mean, good luck, Josh? Bengals, what? Bengals. Oh, Bengals. Super Bowl. Oh, oh Bengals. Super, oh, Super Bowl? Yeah. Uh, and what's that? Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye as well. Okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. Um, what a nice bunch of people tonight. Nice show. A little depressing at times, but, you know, that's life. Okay? Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. You'll be calling him on Skype at GabNet Live. Uh, I will be back here on Monday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Facebook with the uh, pop-up show, which is a very popular show. And then we'll be back here again on Wednesday, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Wear a mask, will you? And if you're not wearing a mask, make sure you got those shots. And if you haven't got the shots, don't have anything to do with anybody. Just stay far away from them. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Happy Super Bowl Sunday.